I gave birth to my son, August 2nd, 1984. And, uh, and it was a beautiful birth, a full nine months, a uh, beautiful little boy. I, my spirit went to hell and it just left my body. And it was like a wet rag, just flying through darkness and hitting a rock stone floor. I landed so hard. It's hot, it's so hot, you can't even breathe. And like, I was an atheist, so I had no idea, uh, you know, about the spiritual world, okay? Demons lined up, seven to eight demons lined up on my on my left side. You're never gonna get out of here. You know where you know where you're at. You're never gonna get out of here. These demons cursed me with everything I had ever done in my life, as in, in every sin. And the last demon said to me, she even had a baby to make herself feel better. The last demon once said to me, walk. I mean, he said it in a demonic monster tongue, walk. And I couldn't because I was on the floor. It's like you're commanded to do something and you can't even do it. You feel it, you really feel it. If you don't have Jesus to bear your sin, you're gonna bear it down in hell. Hi, welcome to Touching the Afterlife. Our guest today is Cindy. Cindy had an out-of-body experience after giving birth to her child where she was taken out of her body and went to hell. You don't want to miss her powerful story today. Welcome, Cindy. Well, uh, the Lord led me to your channel, and I wanted, he really moved on my heart that now is the time to speak for him and to share with the world what he's done for me and not, not uh, put it behind me like it's something to remember by myself, but for everybody to see and hear what the God of heaven can do when there seems to be no hope. And uh, I gave birth to my son, August 2nd, 1984. And, uh, and it was beautiful birth, a full nine months, a uh, beautiful little boy. And when I was in the hospital, uh, just everything was flowing normally. Uh, about the second day there, cause I was gonna stay three days just to have real good recuperation time. So the second night there, the, the the Lord the Lord took my, my spirit down into hell and just dropped I my spirit went to hell and it just left my body and it was like a wet rag just flying through darkness and hitting a rock stone floor and I landed so hard and that's all I could do is look around I was in another realm for sure and like I was an atheist so I had no idea. Uh, you know, about the spiritual world, okay? And so when I landed on in the floor, it, you know, I can tell you everything now because I know the Lord and the scripture, but when it, when it was happening, that's how I'll reveal it to you. These, these figures with dark, black, gray, uh, uh, like vestiture or whatever, or tech, they were dark and black and gray at the same time. And they lined up like demons lined up, seven to eight demons lined up on my on my left side. And these demons cursed me with everything I had ever done in my life as and in every sin. And when people say there's little sins or a little bit of off truth, down there, it becomes a universe of, of hell of weight on, on your shoulders. And you feel it, you really feel it. The weight of, of, of like Jesus, you're going to, if you, if you don't have Jesus to bear your sin, you're going to bear it down in hell. Again, I was an atheist, but this is what I was feeling. So when they lined up on my left side, they cursed me with everything I'd ever done in my life. Lightning speed in the spiritual realm. There's no time like we have here from uh, six in the morning to six at night up down there or up in the spiritual realm is there's no time. So it's like, it comes at lightning speed. It comes so fast, you can't even you can't even wrap your your mind around it. And you do have a mind; you have full faculties in hell. You can see it, but there's nothing to see. It's black, but there, you're allowed to see shadows and feel. And the the overwhelming sense of being in hell is when I all I could do is look around. That's the person behind your eyes, okay? That that descends down. And you just, I looked around and there was, um, and there was nothing but black. It's like volcanic rock. It's so black. It's so dark and craggy and it's hot. It's so hot. You can't even breathe. And the overwhelming sense that came over me is you're never going to get out of here. You know where, you know where you're at. You're never going to get out of here. And this is, this is your fate. You're sealed here. 
And I'll, oh my gosh, I, I mean, just think about it, you know, sharing this is overwhelming. And so, the, like I said, the demons lined up on my left side and they cursed me with everything I'd ever done in my life. And the last demon said to me, she even had a baby to make herself feel better. And so when he said had, for some reason that went like pulsing through my, my soul, had is past tense. So anyway, so as I was, the last demon once said to me, walk. I mean, he said it in a demonic monster tongue, walk. And I couldn't because I was on the floor. And I, I, I was like, it's like you're commanded to do something and you can't even do it. So it's like I had my fingers, my hands in my chest like this. And I, and I was just like trying to move. And then that's when it all ended. It all ended and I was back up in my hospital bed. So when I was like this still laying on my stomach and, and then um, I just, I was coming to and all I could say for probably about five or 10 minutes is like, what was that? what was that? What happened to me? What, what was that? And so uh, anyway, so I, 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 my hospital bed was wet with sweat. And so I just thought, oh my gosh. And all I could think of, she had a baby, had, what do you mean had? So I got out of my hospital bed, like three, three 30 in the morning. And I went to the hospital nursery and I said, um, uh, how's my baby? And she said, oh, he's sleeping. When he wakes up, we'll bring him to you. And it will, you know, and then, you know, you can nurse. So then I went back to my hospital bed and just passed out. I couldn't believe something earth shattering was happening to me, but I couldn't put my finger on it. Like, what's, what is this? And so then they woke me up and they, and about before the sun even rose and they said, Mrs. Jardine, something's terribly wrong with your baby. Uh, he's got a temperature that we don't even normally see here when children or babies are sick. And his, the, his temperature was so high, they said, we're going to have to keep them away from you. And we don't know until we know what's going on. And that's kind of what, um, how it started. And um, so they transferred him to Mount Zion in San Francisco and his heart blew up. He had a, uh, they said we had, he had a virus that passed in the placenta, uh, right? I guess when I was ready to get birth, the virus was doing its thing and it passed right to him. And it was a severe flu virus, they said, a Coxsackie B. And uh, it it, uh, it blew up his heart, and he died. And so um, uh, my son was uh, born August second and died August 9th to the uh, eighth day of his life. And uh, he was in Mount Zion, San Francisco. And uh, that's where it all started. Uh, everything literally, uh, my life was coming apart. And uh, it's like I didn't. But when you're an atheist, you don't know how to deal with stuff. You're just thinking, uh, um, well this is a hard part of life. I guess uh, I'm going to just, you know, um, try to wade through this. How do I deal with it? So my parents said, just come to my ha our house and you don't have to go home and stay alone, you know, because my husband's a pharmacist and he's uh, at work and he went to work and he was obviously very devastated, but he still went to work. And so I was at my parents' house laying on the couch and um, it is stewing, stewing in my sin and my sorrow. And so then I'd go home and just take care of the, my other, my home. And then, um, Cindy, did you have any other children or was this your first child? My first one. Okay. And then, um, so I, you know, when, when I was at home, I just decided to go back home and then not to be at my parents' house anymore. I, um, my mom, two weeks after my son died, two weeks, just two weeks, she suffered a massive stroke. I guess it hit her hard. And so I had to go to the same hospital, the same elevator going on, you know, basically the same hospital floors uh, to the cardiac unit where my mom was. And I'm going, OK, this is it. My son died. Now my mom's dying. Uh, I guess I'm going to go home and just kill myself. OK, I'm done. I'm done. I don't need I don't need this life. Well, little did I think, blessed be the name of the Lord. Um, I was leaving the hospital corridor with all these thoughts in my mind, like, okay, as soon as I get out of here, because my husband's at work, I go, I'm just going to go. So at that point, I always said, that's it. I'm just going to go home and end my life. It's, it's over. I'm done here. So as I was leaving the hospital, the, down the long corridor, there was nobody there, but I had high heels on. And, uh, and, I, and just as I was, there was only one lady in front of me. This part's very important. There's a lady in front of me and she was walking, she was walking out, ready to walk out the hospital door. And I, and I slipped on my high heel. I literally slipped for no reason and just went down on the floor and I hit my butt pretty hard. 
And so then she came, this lady turned around and heard me go, woo, you know, so then she came up to my shoulder and she was helping me stand up. And so then uh, I can tell you now, because I talked with her, uh, she said, God, she said, God spoke to her. She was walking out of that hospital door and he said, go and talk to that woman. Go talk to her now. And her name is Betsy. So Betsy said, but she's going out the door. She's going out the hospital door. Well, and she says, right then and there, I slipped so hard. She goes, and that was my open door to come and help you and talk to you. So she stood in that hospital corridor, just me and her talking to me. And she kept telling me, and this is, I'm making it short, but she kept telling me, God's calling you. I'm going, God, what do you mean God? You know, she goes, he wants you to be a sheep. And I go, hey, God, now that you tell me there's a God and he wants me to be a sheep, I go, are you okay? And she goes, you don't understand it now, but he wants you to be one of his sheep. And I, <laughs> I can cry thinking about it. So I go, okay, so well, why are you here? You're spending all this time talking to me. Why are you here? And she, I mean, literally, we were in the hallway for about 45 minutes. And she goes, oh, my son's going to be perfectly fine. I go, what, your son? What, what do you mean your son? She goes, well, he he just got hit by a car and he's got a concussion and he's, they're working on him. I'm going, oh. and you're, you're talking, you're taking all this time talking to me and your son's in there being worked on with a concussion. What's going on here? And so then she goes, I, God has his hand all over this. My son's going to be fine. And so then I go, okay. So I go, okay, thank you for all your time. And she goes, don't forget, God wants you to be your sheep, his sheep. So I went out the door. And as soon as I exited the hospital door, these dem demonic voices came right to me and said, that woman's a freak. Don't believe a word she said. And that's exactly um, what they said to me. So I went home and uh, I smoked a joint and I looked out the window and I said, if there is a God, reveal yourself to me. You know, I was open. I mean, I don't even know why, because I guess now he, won't, he was calling me, but I go, if there's a God, reveal yourself to me. And right then and there, I collapsed on my kitchen floor. So I had a home overlooking San Francisco Bay. It was a massive view, beautiful. And and I just looked out and this is like, this the power of the Holy Spirit just, just dropped me to my knees. And it was God allowing repentance to me. And that's all I can, that's that's how it's, these are, this is one of the stages that was happening. My life was crashing in, it was just like, crashing in so hard on a human being. I mean, how much can you take, right? I mean, I wasn't in the Jewish camps, but you know, it was it was unbearable. And so uh, so then it's like right then and there, I went down on my knees, I, I crumpled on my kitchen floor and just cried. And I said, oh God, um, you know, if you're there, reveal yourself to me. And they kind of ended there and I went about my day, okay? So then my husband came home I think probably the next day after and said, Hey, uh, remember that guy, Mike, we used to party with a big partier in, you know, California that we knew. And, and he goes, well, he, he got saved and now he's holding Bible studies and he gave me a Bible. There's a note in the Bible and, and see, I'm, I'm still an atheist, right? You know, technically an atheist. I wasn't born again yet. Okay. That's coming. Blessed be his name. So, I, there was a note in the Bible that said, yeah, I'm, I'm Mike. Hey, remember me? Hi, guys. I felt led to give you this Bible. And so here, take it. And whenever you can, try to come to my study. Well, Mike had no idea what was going on in our family, what was going on between me and my husband and our baby dying. He had no clue, nothing, nothing. He just came by the pharmacy because my husband's a pharmacist and he gave him a Bible. So my husband just put on somewhere and I go, okay, whatever. My life's falling apart. I don't have time for the Bible, right? I don't have time for, you know, for, for uh, that stuff. So, and it's so bizarre. So, um, after my mom's stroke, that was the, that was the straw that broke me. And, uh, I said, okay, that's when I was going to do myself in. And then my husband said to me, you know, Mike did leave a note in that Bible. Why don't we find out where he's having his Bible study? Just go just, just to see him anyway. It's been, you know, 10, 15 years. Let's just go see him, you know, see what he's up to. And I'm like, I'm still an unbeliever, you know, with unbelieving mind. I go, yeah, you know, hey, we used to party with him. Let's go see him. <laughs> well, Mike was given a Bible study and he was talking about how God in heaven is calling people to himself. And he says he's got people all around the world, every country, every nation, you know, that, that opens their heart to the living God is welcome to come. And so I'm like, 
hmm, those words are interesting. Uh, what does that mean? You know, <laughs> what does that stuff mean that Mike's saying? And so um, after it was all over, we said, hi, Mike, bye. We went to a Mexican restaurant. Okay, this is important. <laughs> we went to a Mexican restaurant. And there was a big party going on, like a big Mexican wedding. And the bride had her 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 chest ha basically hanging out of her wedding dress. And, I'm, you know, but there was a lot of alcohol flowing and the champagne. And that's we went or, we entered in the restaurant like that. And this is important because I'm like, yeah, let's let's just crash this wedding. Let's do it. And so then but first we were going to eat. So we went to the back of the restaurant to this really nice booth and it was dark back there with nice lighting and all the, we, we were given the menus and this is super important. And my husband was looking at his menu and as I was looking at mine, the demon I had in me knew that the Holy Spirit was going to come flying into me that I couldn't even, I don't even remember what was on the menu. The demon I had flew out of me He because the Holy Spirit was flying into me and the demon I had flew right out of me. It was simultaneous. It's like the demon couldn't even inhabit where the Holy Spirit was coming in. It was lightning fast and the demon flew out of my body. And, and, and it's just like, I was set free right there. I was set free. And, and I was, all I could do is go, all I could do is like, it's like the power of God just, just fell upon me and Jesus himself came inside of me. That's what it means to be born again. The Holy Spirit comes inside of you. It's not some religious activity. It's not some doing good thing. You hate it. The Holy Spirit has to come inside of you. It dwells in you. And so all I could do is hold that next to him and you're going, oh, praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Oh, blessed be his name. Oh, praise the living God. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. My husband's looking at me. He goes, what's wrong with you? What happened to you? And I go, Jesus just came into me. I had a demon and the demon left me. And gee, my husband goes, oh my gosh, I want what you have. You are so lit up. I want what you have. And so that's what happened at the Mexican restaurant. I went home on cloud nine, literally. And I was just like, wow, like, what do I do with this? What do I do? You know? So anyway, um, I'm going to, you know, stepping ahead here. So about on September 15th, 1984, between, I'll say it's almost six in the morning, between five and six, because my husband was laying next to me, he was sleeping. The Lord took my body, he took my spirit and lifted me up to the heavens on this white stone. It was just like, bam, I was just lifted to, through the heavens on this huge white stone. And I was laying there and I was on my back and I was looking up. All I could do was just look up. And all of a sudden, like I said, Jesus, he, what he showed, this is what he showed me. He, like an oil refinery fire is just black, nothing but black and horrible clouds of black. And then it was rolling over my head, just rolling over my head. And then all of a sudden, these piercing like diamond lights were just the most glorious penetrating diamond brilliance just was piercing, piercing through the cloud, just all over. And I, I, and I was, just, I was screaming, I was screaming and he commanded an angel and the angel came and went just right by me. And I was on the stone on my back and he said, peace, be still. And so then, so then I just was like a dead person. I was like dead, I, but I was still alive in the spirit, right? My, whatever I was there, I was witnessing everything. And Jesus started descending from heaven with his robe dipped in, his whole robe was dipped in blood. When it says dipped, it's not like the edges or your fringes. His whole robe was dipped in blood and his whole face was like lightning, like just lightning. And you can't, you could not see his face, but it was brilliant. The most like uh, his, his face makes the sun look like, like junk. And he, he started descending down and his hands were at his side and they were low down to his side and his hands were extended. They were extended with the palms out like this, but at his side and he was descending. And I was just, all I could do was just stare, just stare. And I was like, you know, it just, uh, it never, I've never been the same. So it ended and I was in my bed. So I jumped out of my bed and all I could say is, Where's that Bible that Mike gave my husband? Where is that Bible at? Oh my gosh. So I, I look all through the house. I found it and 
put it on my couch and my husband's still sleeping. He doesn't know what's going on. And, <laughs> and so, but the Lord knows everything. And he saw me. And, and so I put the Bible on the couch and I go, what do you want me to do? Oh God, you're the God of heaven. Oh father, God, God of Abraham. So uh, anyway, so he, I didn't, I didn't say God Abraham yet. And so then I opened, and so I, I opened the Bible and put it down and it's like the pages were just moving. And he stopped at Ezekiel chapter three. And he said, I'm sending you to the house of Israel. I'm sending you to my people and to a people uh, that uh, he goes, they're the people, a people who should listen to you, but they won't listen to you because they're not willing to listen to me. He goes, but I put my spirit in you. He goes, and I've made your forehead harder than theirs. And he goes, and I'm with you. I'm with you. And I will be with you. And he goes, and tell them I love them. That's the father. He said, tell them I love them. And I just, I just cried. I have to say I cried for two weeks, <laughs> just two weeks, because human beings think they know what they're doing on this earth. Like, like, what are the, like the prophet says, woe to those who are wise in their own eyes. And he says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. That's for sure. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. I did all that. And he had mercy. Jesus is the living God. He had mercy. But to say that he's sending me to the house of Israel, I was like, what? <laughs> what? And so, because my background is law. So he sent me to nothing but Jewish lawyers. And I got to witness and testify to the, the Jewish lawyers. And I blew some of their minds. Became really good friends with uh, uh, some, of them, some of them. And and their children. Babysat and the whole bit. Uh, and they, they were like, Cindy's on fire for something. <laughs> And uh, some were receptive and some weren't. And uh, it's all, it's, that's kind of how, how my career went. And how, what are some of the things that he's shown you? I mean, you've been walking with the Lord now for what, 30 years? Since 1984. Yeah. And you didn't turn back, right? You, you no. just kept walking with the Lord. And a so torch. a torch for him. And, I'm, and, I, and I've seen people come and go that say, oh, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. All right. There's a lot of church people out there that have not been born again. And that's grievous to me. The Lord's the last year that's been put on my heart. He's grieved for those who say that they're Christians, but they're not. They're just, they're people who go to church and have activities, but they don't know him. They don't know him. You have to be born again. Like Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again in order to see the kingdom of God because it's a spiritual realm. Like when he stood before Pilate, he stood before Pontius Pilate and he said, my kingdom is not of this realm. And he's right. That's true. That's true. Well, and I thought it was interesting how it truly is a transformation. You said that exchange from the demonic to the Holy Spirit coming in. That was when you were able to open the Bible and you had a desire and a hunger. But so it's almost like it went from your head to your heart and you knew to say, Jesus, you knew when that happened. It That's was right. powerful. That that I'll, I'll never forget it ever, 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 ever. You know, because uh, that demon couldn't get out fast enough. He knew I was chosen, I guess, at that moment, because he had, he, it was a nanosecond transfer because he, because God cannot dwell where there's darkness. He will not dwell where there's darkness and de demonic, the demons like, like Dagon in the scriptures. He, God smashed that idol up, you know, when the Ark of Covenant was in there. And so the same, it's the same. He will not dwell where darkness is. Mm -hmm. So you're saying too, like, a lot of people may know Jesus as in their mind, but not truly born again. Is that what you're saying? That there's a lot of people in the church like that? That's right. And that, I believe that's part of the five wise, five foolish. The the foolish bride, part of the bride, it heard, they heard those things, but it never, it never went in. It never went in their soul. They heard. That's why Jesus says, there's going to be those people who knock and start banging on the door saying, let us in, let us in. He's, and he says, depart from me. I never knew you. you know, I never knew you. But the five wise with the oil in their lamp, the oil is the Holy Spirit and anointing. It's anointing. And he knows his children, like Paul the Apostle said. He knows his own. And um, mm -hmm. I love that. It's true. Amen. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I think too, wouldn't you say, like, it's when doesn't Jesus say you'll know them by their fruit? Amen. Yeah. But they can, there's pretenders out there. So, yeah. But God sees the heart. He's looking right through you. That's another thing. Uh, when I was on that stone, screaming in heaven, that white stone, I was screaming so bad because it's like he looks at 
right through you, just like a, water, a cup of water. He will, he just looks right through you. And he, he sees every thought. He knows your motive. He knows everything. And so, and you're going to answer for it. A couple questions I have, Cindy, is you, when that transfer demonic left you and the Holy Spirit came in, which is just a beautiful salvation story, where did that demon come from, do you think? Oh, my relationship with that guy when I committed adultery. So before you were saved, then you're saying you had, you committed adultery and yeah. there was a demon from that adulterous affair. That's true. That came in. Okay. Tell that us a little bit about into, that. That demon came in, the demon came into me and I was a different person. I was uh, more, I was bubbly before and uh, I was, uh, you know, transparent and just, you know, living life, managing a law firm, whatever, you know. But when that thing came into me, I changed and it's like, I would try to have my own thoughts about something and something would always override my thoughts. I'm going, that's, this is weird. I kept saying to myself, this is weird. I feel weird. I feel different. But again, in the spiritual realm, you, they're hiding. You don't know what they're doing, but yet they, they're doing it to you, but you don't know what they're doing. So once you're born again, then you, Jesus pulls back the covers and he goes, here's, here's, here's the demons. This is what they do. And they hate, they hate the cross because Jesus exposes the demons because of the Holy Spirit, the power of God. He just pulls the curtain back and says, see, this is what the world's fighting against and they don't even know it. And now uh, that's what happened to me. That's a good point. So a lot of people who are manifesting demons, they don't even realize it. And don't believe it. do you know what type of demon it was that, because I know spirit, there's different types of demons. I'd say spirit of lust. Lust, that's, that's what I, what I would say. Mm -hmm. It's on anybody that's lusting out there. Oh, it's huge. It's huge. And with the world of pornography for people, I feel so bad for them because they think, oh, it's just my flesh. I'm going to fulfill my flesh and do what I want. But oh my gosh, the demons behind it, they're luring you in and sucker. They, they show you the roses, but they don't show you the thorns and the cliff that you're going to go off of. They just don't, they hide that part. They hide it. And every adulterous relationship, they go, oh, look at this, look at this. But they don't show you the cliff that you're going to go down. They have no, they have no intention of showing you your fate. Because they, they're what they're doing is wrapping you up like a cocoon in the sin they've we they've weaved around you, woven around you, and then they take you right down. I feel sorry for people. I was blind, not no more. Amen. And so when that demon of lust left you, you didn't have those thoughts anymore, right? You didn't nope. have you didn't have that problem. You didn't have that to deal he, with anymore. Jesus, clean house. <laughs> Jesus cleaned house. Yes. Now, did you have to renounce any other demons after your salvation? No. When G when the Holy Spirit comes in, that's it. The Lord takes over. He clean. He he makes you. The old things are gone. Then you become a new man, a new person. And what did your husband think? I know you said that he saw a radical change in you. And what is at the what restaurant is when it went down? He goes. I, all I could say was, all I could do was like pray. It's like when God, the power of God, comes upon you, and which it did. It. I was still holding the menu and all I could do is praise Jesus and glorify God. And, I, and I'm sure the waitress was standing back going, what's, what's happening? But my husband goes, what's going on with you? What happened? I go, it's all Jesus. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. You know? And my husband's going, okay, what you have, I want that. He saw that. He, he, he saw So it. he gave his life to the Lord at that yes, point? Yes, he did about two weeks later. Mm -hmm. And then, and then uh, this, is, this is a funny story, true. I would, there was a great Chinese restaurant I went to and uh, I used to go there all the time. And so this, it was, it's still so small. It's like eight tables in there. So this one person saw me goes, she goes, Hey, what happened to you? And I go, what do you mean? She goes, you look different. <laughs> and I go, Oh, it's Jesus. <laughs> she goes, you were like stone before. And I go, you got it right. I was like stone. I go, but it's Jesus. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Like a true countenance change, huh? It could, a total change. Yeah. Cindy, did you end up having any more children after this experience? Yes, I did. Um, the Lord was gracious to me and gave me a daughter in 1988 and my son in 1990. And they're beautiful, beautiful children, smart, beautiful. Wonderful. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's just been a delight having you share with us today. And I know that there is some, uh, the Lord has also put something else on your heart that you want to share with us. Why don't you say what that is? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
this is because the Lord God of Israel has called me to, to be a witness to his people. And uh, you can judge for yourselves that I'm not an ancient rabbi with all that wisdom and all the Talmud behind me. But this is what the Lord says to you. Thus says the Lord, do not fear, O Israel. Have I not, have I not promised to lift you up among all the nations to be exalted because of my great name and my promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Therefore, do not fear, even though I have scattered you among the nations for all the abominations you have committed in my land. I will redeem you, and lo, I already have by my holy blood shed on the cross for all of you. But now is the time for each of you, for each of you in my land to open your hardened hearts to me, the only one who can redeem your soul. I know the enemies, and I am very acquainted with their inner thoughts that they will eradicate you from the earth. But as I said to David, I sit in the heavens and laugh, for I see their day is drawing near for them to be erased from the earth. Therefore, do not fear, O Israel. I will redeem you and the Lord and the land I have reserved for myself. Soon you will see your enemies, though the number is great, you will see them no more. And Israel is saying, why don't the nations care about what is happening to us? It is because I am accomplishing my will. Read in your own prophets that I sent in Micah 4, 1 through 11 through 12. And that's what the Lord has to say at this very, very moment. That's what he gave me. And I know my calling. And uh, I, I hope you guys take heed because he is your Messiah. He's the Messiah of the whole world. He's let the Gentiles in because, because you didn't want him. So he said, I guess I'll choose the other people then. Uh, people uh, that will accept me. And uh, you look at the Gentiles as foolish, but it's the foolishness of the gospel that God's using for his glory. But there's many Jews in Israel right now who know the truth and they're trying to share and God wants you to listen to them. Stop opposing what the prophets have said. And he is coming back soon, wouldn't you say? Yes, I, we're at the end. We are at the end. And God, it's like the curtain's closing and God's saying, get in. The curtain's closing, get in. Mm. That's what's happening. And he moved upon me to get a hold of your ministry to say, to get his word out there, to get my testimony out there and not hide that lamp, right? Don't, he didn't light the lamp to hide it under the, under the bed somewhere. So now's the time he moved on me. And because Israel's in dire straits and the nations are against them, God is very concerned and saying, I see you guys, I see you, don't worry. You're not gonna, you're not gonna perish even though your enemies say you will, you won't. Wow, well, I appreciate you coming on today and sharing your story and what the Lord's you know, calling you to, and on, I would love for you to pray what's on your heart in that. Heavenly Father, as you stand above the vaulted dome of this earth, you look down to support the hearts that fully belong to you. And Lord, bless Julie and her ministry because she's reaching out to people and so many facets, Lord, that you're going to accomplish through her ministry and the people, all the ministry, all the testimonies, Lord, let people wake up. Use this, use this platform to wake people up. And Lord, to you be all the glory. None of it comes from us. We have nothing to offer except for a, um, a fallen condition. And I just pray this, this whole thing just, just uh, glorifies your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen.